Dahlia Darsa Kay joins us now. She is a senior fellow at the UCLA Burkle Center for International Relations. Good to have you with us. Hi. Hey. So tension is building in the Middle East with the U.S. strikes on Syria and Iraq over the weekend in retaliation for the deadly attack on a U.S. base in Jordan. And this as the U.S.-led coalition strikes uh, continue on Houthi targets in Yemen in response to the Iran-backed militants attacking ships in the Red Sea. So what is your assessment of the U.S. retaliatory strikes? Will they escalate this war or contain it? Well, I think it's somewhere in between. Uh, it's clear that the U.S. response uh, was attempted to be calibrated to show that there would be a response to attacks on U.S. forces, especially in this case with American deaths. Uh, but there is a desire to avoid wider escalation and a direct conflict with Iran. So the attacks remain within Iraq and Syria, not within Iran itself. Uh, so I think there is this attempt to be calibrated and control, but of course, uh, un the unpredictability of these exchanges is increasing. So it is still quite a dangerous situation. And U.S. officials are vowing further action against Iran-backed militants using a multi-tiered response. What might that action look like, do you think? It's hard to know. I, I think the assumption is that uh, there will be cyber activities, the type of activities we may not see as publicly, uh, but we can expect a little bit more of the same. Uh, let's remember that even earlier this month, before the deaths of Americans, the U.S. was already attacking uh, high-level targets in Syria and Iraq. The U.S. killed a major militia head in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, which created a lot of friction with the Iraqi government. Uh, so. I think these responses will have to up the game a little beyond that. So I'm assuming they will try to target some pretty essential militia heads. But again, I think there's going to be uh, an attempt to strike a balance and not lead to, to kind of a wider conflict, especially getting Iran uh, into a direct conflict with the United States. But again, it's very, very hard to contain and keep this calibrated. And that is the constant worry. The U.S. is now engaged in two fronts directly, and that is not something it had intended to do when this a horrible war started over four months ago now. Yeah, and Iran is saying itself uh, that uh, it will respond but doesn't want a war with the U.S. So what's Iran trying to achieve here and how much control does it actually have over these militias? That's the question everyone keeps asking again and again, and there's not a perfect answer. It's clear that Iran funds and uh, supplies arms and training to uh, this wide array of militia groups, but its relationship with each of them is quite different. Its main goal is to disrupt and deter and keep the fight against um, Iran itself. The regime's ultimate goal is survival, uh, but it is playing a very dangerous game. It's been very disruptive, uh, and there are a few militias especially the Houthis, but others who are, are engaging in very unpredictable behavior. It's not clear Iran has full operational control uh, over all of these types of exchanges. And so it's very easy to see how this could get uh, out of hand and how this could escalate, even if unintended. And Iran says uh, these U.S. strikes make it hard to find a political solution. Could the strikes become an obstacle, perhaps, to reaching a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas? Or might they offer an incentive to bring that war to an end? Well, I think ultimately the end of the war will happen through diplomacy, not through these military exchanges. And this type of tit for tat, to be honest, was happening even before the Gaza war. Certainly every day this war continues, it heightens the risk for further uh, escalation. But ultimately, and this is why presumably Secretary Blinken is in the region yet again, uh, working very actively with regional partners to try to at least put a temporary pause to this war. Uh, the U.S. is still not backing a permanent ceasefire, which is what most of the region would like to see. But really, to end this war, there's going to have to be some diplomatic solution. The only release of hostages to date happened through diplomacy at the end of November. There, we It cannot happen soon enough. This war is so devastating, even if we can keep it contained and controlled and, and not see it an all-out regional war. It has already been extremely costly, of course, in Gaza itself, but the wider region is already uh, absolutely uh, in, in turmoil. And so I think, you know, there is a desire to try to lower the temperature and get some kind of ceasefire uh, and release of hostages as soon as possible. 
Dalia Dasa-Kay, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you.